Good morning, friends. Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Donna. Great to see you this morning. Hope you are well. Good morning. Let's see how are we doing here? Hear me okay? We're trying to try new things all the time here. Make ourselves a little better. So hope everybody is doing all right. Good morning, Fanny Faye Davis. Glad you are here. Thank you. That's everybody that's coming in and uh, will be with us today. Your gift is a presence, friends. Your gift is a presence. Uh, you know this. Thank you. Let's get charged up. It's been a been a morning. Good, good, good. We are gathering this week. I see folks coming in. I'll give it a, one another another little minimo. So, morning, Irene. How are you? I hope you're doing all right. Uh, John, good morning. Great to see you. Oh, thanks for being here. If you're driving, you know, safety first, but yeah, glad to be here. So thank you. But think about it. I mean, your gift is your gift is a is uh, your presence is a gift here. I want you to remember that and know that um, we're all in this. Um, I think if anything we've gotten out of this time is recognizing how much presence is a gift. You know, sometimes you feel like, you know, I think we've all had the experience of going to a meeting and being like, uh, I don't want to go to that meeting. But what we realize in that, because um, we're not going to get anything out of it, you know, but what we often, we, and we don't may not need the meeting, but what we forget is the meeting needs us. Is that, and that, uh, and that when we put ourselves in this place of understanding that meet, the meeting needs us, uh, that's actually when I think the, the real treasures of what we get start to flow. Hey, good morning, Jamie. Morning, Robin Carden. Robin Carden, everybody. Uh, she's going to be uh, at 1145 this afternoon or this morning uh, right after this. Uh, Robin will be on board with Passing Time with passing Pastor Robin. Uh, she has been slinging the wisdom lately, gang. So... Uh, um, I encourage you to uh, to uh, uh, be a part of that journey too. Um, she's a great encouragement to me. So, COVID at BIW again? Yep. There's there. We're we are going to see this. We are going to see people getting sick. It is tra it is tough, 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 tough. At the eye surgeon, please behave like. Hmm. Well, now that I know. Just kidding. I, good morning, everybody. It is uh, the 24th of November. I, I can't even believe that. We're like six days away from December. Uh, we are uh, five days away from the beginning of the, the Advent season. And we're in the midst of this time of Thanksgiving. And so uh, did you think of it when we started in March we would be here? But we are. So uh, here we are. Hey, Judy, great to see you. Say hi to Jack for me. And so on. So I so I want to talk a little bit. Uh, you know, we've been talking this whole month about the pilgrim journey and and we could keep talking about it. But but I want to shift a little bit of gear uh, this week. We're going to talk about gratitude. Don't you worry at all. Like we will. Gratitude will find its way. Um, if you listen to, to Sunday sermon, it was certainly a part of that. Good morning, Sherry Ladd. Great to see you here. Uh, 
those grandkids are getting big. So the uh, uh, so we are coming to this place of uh, the pilgrims, and we've been talking about the pilgrims, as I said. But what I I want to talk about is actually shift gears a little bit and recognize. You talk about pilgrims' worship, and and but but even even more interesting than that, I want to talk about what are called the pilgrim psalms. Now, uh, if you don't know, if you're not if you're not big on Bible, so there are this there is the songbook of the Israelite people, which are the psalms which you find kind of smack dab in the middle of bible and they were the they were the soundtrack they were what people sung when they were about their day and and uh there are songs of gratitude there are songs songs of of wonder there are songs of psalms of despair and you hear these psalms over and over again and they are songs they're the song lyrics of of the era uh of of what we have of what we know and so but they were used at all times when they say, when they say uh, the Holy Supper when G, when they gathered and they said they sang a hymn we we can be pretty sure we know what hymn they sang we, or at least a close approximation it was one of the Psalms and probably a, a specific a few specific ones when Jesus is on the cross and says Eloi Eloi Eloi, Eloi, Thabakhtani, you know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's singing a psalm. That's the beginning of the 22nd Psalm. He's not, he, he's not crying out for help. He's, he's singing a song as he is being crucified. So I, understanding this, that these psalms, because the thing is, is that the psalms played an integral part of the pilgrims, our pilgrims, 400 year ago pilgrims, of their life. And I and uh, I you know I don't think we sing the psalms enough uh, honestly, but that that's a part of it was an integral part of their worship because they were reaching back to they they had kind of you know what we're doing here with all the glitz and the glamour and all the all the stuff and all the smells and the bells and and the the corruption that the church that they were finding in that day they wanted to break it down into simple church and so that what did they what did they do they reached back to what what the first, what the early church did and what did the early church did it sang psalms and so the singing of psalms are is this is this part and and i don't think you're necessarily going to gather around the the thanksgiving table and sing psalms but what i think there's something in this for us as we start this thanksgiving week as we enter into this and this unique thanksgiving week as it is um that that so the so the pilgrim psalms are pilg are psalm 120 to 134 so those 14 psalms are what are known as the pilgrim psalms and so what they were is they were songs that you sang while you were on your way to Jerusalem there were a couple of times a year that you were required by Judaic law to go to Jerusalem to offer your sacrifice, Passover being one. Uh, and it was the journeying, it was the journey to the temple. That's what it was. It was to the journey to the center. And so in this journeying, there were songs that you sang. There was, there was a soundtrack. You know, if you've ever, it's, I mean, think of it like, you know, those of us back in the day would make a mixtape and if you made a, you slid a mixtape in, you had a mixtape for your sound, for your road trip. Um, you know, I know there are people here that did that, like that you had, that you had a soundtrack for your journey and this was their soundtrack. And so I want to, but, but, I, and I think it's, and I, I want to spend a little time with it. So maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow. Maybe we won't. I don't know yet. But, but I want to talk about it today because I want you to hear the first two Psalms because they, because of what, because I think they offer us something about our journeying this week. Because, you know, some of you are not going to gather. Some of you are going to gather. Some of you are going to, you know, there's, we've, there's going to be all manner of way in which we're going to negotiate this week. And but I hope you whatever you choose to do that you stay in connection, because the whole notion of the Psalms, the whole notion and particularly the Pilgrim Psalms, is that we might stay in connection with God. This this twenty like if you think of the the Psalm twenty two, where you know that my God my God why have you forsaken me? It is this crying out. And this litany of bad things that have happened, 
but it is this way of staying in connection. It's this way of continuing to tell your story to God, even when your inner story is, is full of, of snakes and smells and puppy dog tails and all manner of awful things. That, that when we, when we're apart, when it's within us is not beautiful, we somehow feel we cannot say it. But, and so the ancient Israelites sang it. You know, I think there's a beauty in this, you know, that that way that we can't when we, you know, when we, you know, there are people who, you know, kind of Mel Tillis, I think, is probably the most famous, the the singer who has a horrible stutter. But when he sings, he does not stutter at all. Friends, I think our heart is that way, that when we when we can some of the things that we shudder to speak, we can actually sing. And and so these psalms, these songs so I want to share with you the first two because I think they offer us something. They, they, they offer us something about how we might negotiate this pil- the pilgrimage of this week, the, tra- the journey into the center, the journey to Jerusalem that is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving has traditionally always been the single most traveled holiday in America and will be the most traveled holiday in America this year too. That people will if that if you are going to give thanksgiving it is done in hearth and home that how it is done and we are travel ourselves to get there and to find ourselves in that space it's what just just what we do and we do it and and apparently we do it in the face of disease we do it in the face of government sanctions we do it in, it's what we do because it's how we're hardwired as people and so i want you to hear this this how this this journey of of thanksgiving begins this journey to the center this journey to the holy city this journey to jerusalem happens is it and it starts with this it starts with the 120th psalm i'll read it for you now so this is the 120th psalm a prayer for deliverance in my distress i cry to the lord that he may answer me deliver me O lord from lying lips and from deceitful tongue What shall be given to you, and what shall be done to you, you deceitful tongue? A warrior's sharp arrows with glowing coals of the broom tree. Woe is me, that I am an alien in Meshach, that I must live among the tents of Kedar. Too long have I had my dwelling among those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. We begin the journey to Jerusalem in war, in conflict, when our heart desires peace. You know, I love this psalm because one of the most, one of the most wonderful things about Hebrew and, the most, and about Hebrew text is that there, a lot of it is ambivalent. And translators will try to solve that ambivalence. But here, there, it still comes out, and I love that it comes out. This is, deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Who's lying lips and who's deceitful tongue? Is it the fact that we're around a world that will lie to us and that will tell us all manner of things that are not true that, about ourselves and about the way we should be? Or is it that we, to, we in ourselves are telling ourselves stories that are just not true about us, telling ourselves ways that we wish we were or we'd like to be, but that we are deceitful in even our own truth-telling of our own. Can we bring before God in our songs and in our psalms those places that both we we are being deceitful and that the world is trying to destroy us that the arrow that we feel like arrows are coming at us where we feel like we are at war those places of war that's where the pilgrimage starts that's where our journeying starts that's where our orientation of our of our desire for the, of our heart of peace our desire to make right in the world bring leads us into hearth and home leads us into joy and peace leads us into the holy city leads us to the temple the altar and the seat of god that's 
the impulse that this very week that's the impulse that's the impulse that the pilgrims of 400 years ago that that our our folks that that drew them that that they might build a world that was not at war with them and that they might not be at war with themselves you know, I, I know everybody dresses up this whole thing about the pilgrimage pilgrims. And I've read I don't know how many articles this season about, well, we really need to get rid of the storybook idea of the pilgrims. And I'm like, I, I'm I, I'm really that is hear my words, revisionist history. The longest extended period of peace on this continent since uh, that that was a part of uh, that was a that was a part of what we've been through was when the pilgrims arrived 55 years the the wampanoag and the pilgrims lived in peace with each other 55 years we haven't had a stretch of 55 years of peace in this nation since that time king philip's war started changed everything but prior to that that generation, whatever we say about previous generations, we like to lump on top of them like the sins of their of their children that would come later that did not know the promise of that time. But I'll submit to you and I'll fight it out with anybody on, in, on the basic historical record. Those pilgrims lived in peace with the people that they encountered and with each other in the best way that they knew how. Not perfect people. But that was born out of they're getting on a they're running from a war, world that would have been war at war with them from their desire to understand their own war with themselves and to and to come to a place where they would try and fight it out not to overcome but try to fight it out in a way that they would be elevated and drawn into the love and the grace of peace that so the second psalm, so if you are a good pilgrim headed to, uh, to Jerusalem, if you are on your way, you would sing that first psalm. And the second psalm you would sing would be this. After you have sung that the world is at war with you, you would say this. The 121st psalm. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade in your right hand. The Lord will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Friends, in a world that seems like it's at war with you, in a world that seems like it is nothing but arrows and glowing coals heaped upon you, the world will not overcome you because your help comes from the high places. It comes from from the from the journeying towards the holy city towards the pilgrim's promise towards the maker of heaven and earth towards the place where you will not fall and you will not be fallen the place where god loves you beyond measure the place that dwells in your heart and in your being and in your soul that some days you might find and some days it is covered by the deceitful tongue of your own being or in the deceitful tongue of the world that would lie to you. Friends, we come to be watched over. That's why we join in the pilgrim's path. And you're being watched over right now. That as you journey through this week, God's hand is upon you. This community goes with you. The, there's this, the Lord's love is, is, surrounds you. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that though you may have been forced onto the path with the, with the deceit and the war world, that will prevent you from finding the peace that surpasses all understanding from the high places of the hills or from where your help comes. 
All right, friends, that's my encouragement for you today. I hope you will uh, you will continue to journey with us. Uh, we'll be here, you know, we'll be here all week. Try the veal. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be doing. I'll have a a a eleven eleven for you tomorrow, and I will have a special Thanksgiving eleven eleven for you as well. Uh, that we'll have a chance to gather on, at eleven eleven on Thanksgiving. So if you would, uh, if you're journeying with us. So uh, I hope you have a great day on your pilgrimage of your passing through this week and uh, that you may know that God's love and God's grace is ever upon you and your foot will not slip and you will and God is not asleep at the wheel. So peace and grace, my friends.